Today, we're excited to welcome two people who believe that tea has the ability to nurture the spirit. Alfonso Wright and Jamila McGill join us to talk about opening Brooklyn Tea, how they educate their community, and what they're brewing up next. This is School of Hustle, the show where we find advice and inspiration from people who are making their own way. I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and I live and breathe the hustle of business. Today, we're filming from the hustle of it all at the WeWork Times Square in New York City. Everybody, please, let's give Jamila and Alfonso the biggest, warmest welcome to the show. Thank you, Thank you kindly. Thank you. <laughs> you founded Brooklyn Tees. This is amazing. Yes, that's what they tell us. <laughs> How did the two of you come to develop one of the coolest tea empires in New York City? <laughs> Seriously. That's awesome. Yeah. Please uh, tell it. So it started with this guy here, with Alfonso. So he's been bringing his mom tea since he was three years old. That was their daily ritual. He would bring it to her bedside. And at some point, in his adolescence, he started taking sugar out of her tea bit by bit, but behind her back. Um, so partly out of curiosity, partly being a mischievous little boy, um, just interested to see, I guess, what she would notice or if she would notice at all. Yeah, she, she didn't. Yeah. And she didn't notice. No. Yeah, because she was getting accustomed to him taking it out yeah. right over time. And so they kind of just sent him down a rabbit hole of what does it mean to have a tea in this authentic state and that led him huh. to be more interested in how are other cultures experiencing tea right or what are the things that are similar and different and you know it's just a beautiful world to dive into so and then you have me um not really a tea aficionado at first <laughs> <laughs> i'm from atlanta originally so it's very much sweet tea that's ice yeah i'm only drinking hot tea if it's hot if i'm like deaf on my deathbed yeah. right um so this idea of drinking tea in this way that we're having it now with the sit down with the pot that all came from actually dating ali right or alfonso so one of our uh, earlier dates i made her some chai with like a cinnamon stick in the bottom and I made her a blooming tea. So it's a tea you put in hot water and it turns into a flower. Yeah. Oh. And the tea is actually not all that great, but it looks so <laughs> magical. And it's like, oh, this is so romantic. So, so it works. I mean, giving flowers to a girlfriend is a common act. Mm -hmm. and you took it really the extra mile mm -hmm. and you delivered flowers through tea. And it's a surprise, right? And so, it's a surprise because exactly. it blooms. Yeah, exactly. right before your eyes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> Once a customer does come in your shop and they become interested, mm -hmm. how do you keep them interested? Yeah, so we have a couple of tools in our <laughs> toolkit. Oh, I know you do. <laughs> so if you're coming to the store, the first thing you're going to see is the smelling wall. So we have our different, our different varieties of teas all stacked up against the wall. And so huh. people, uh, it's a really cool and interesting thing to see that people have started their own mini journals and notebooks. To, to check off which teas they've had. Oh my right. gosh. So they'll come back in and say, okay, well, I had the vanilla rooibos last time, and so now I want to get into the cream all gray. And so people are like on this adventure of their own. So that's one way we kind of keep people interested. Um, we also always have sample teas on the bar. And we change them every day. And we change them every day. A product does have a huge impact on brand success. Mm -hmm. How do you stay just ahead of what teas you want to carry in the shop and trends in tea, mm -hmm. because product is so important at the end of the day. So how do you source that and think about your product? Yeah. That's from your experience? Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm a tea sommelier. So I took a class. Really? Uh, mm -hmm. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I believe you. That's awesome. Uh -huh. Certified. Um, That's so amazing. I took a class that was about a year so I can learn how to pair teas and just learn all about the history of tea and yeah. tea culture. Um, then I worked in a tea shop nights and weekends while I had my full time job to learn about the business of tea. So um, between that and just being the nerd I am and using things like Google Alerts whenever there's a tea article out. Uh, so we stay, I mean, we just really stay up on all the trends and we make sure that. Uh, that when people come to us and are talking about a tea more often that we like take note like okay like uh maybe three weeks ago dr oz men mentioned matcha so matcha was really big in our shop for a couple okay. weeks yeah. <laughs> right. you're yeah, like why is everyone ordering matcha this today on this right. random tuesday yeah. so you, just, you just stay aware of current events 
Now, um, you two were dating, and I, I love your story about the giving flowers through tea, but now you are in business together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so as you <laughs> embarked on a journey to mm -hmm. run your business together, what was important for you to consider? And, and how do you do that and make that work? Mm. Okay. That's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> I, we really had to learn to respect each other's opinions okay. and perspectives, right? And actually starting a, co a, a company actually forced us to grow as a couple even more yeah. because sometimes we can be a little bit stubborn, right? Or we can see our vision sure. and we can see it beginning to end, right? And it can be hard when someone's trying to introduce a new idea and we have to humble ourselves, right? And yeah. really respect each other's perspectives. What is one lesson that you take into your business every day? One of my number one things is, uh, it's called Kaizen. It's a Japanese uh, word that means improve a little bit every day. Um, so nothing's ever perfect. Our tea shop always has something, something, yeah. something to do, something new problem. And we just try to improve everything a little bit every day. I mean, it could be as small as putting a, uh, paper towel roll in a better place so people can grab it a little faster. Yeah, we have this mantra, how do we win? By being better. You know? <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> and so when you think about competition in the area and other shops, maybe larger shops, mm -hmm. it, it, do you think this is part of what differentiates you and keeps you competitive in the space? Exactly. So um, before we started, we went to pretty much every tea shop in New York City. Okay. Um, everyone we could find. Yeah. Um, we looked at what teas they serve, uh, the customer service, the tiles in the bathroom, and we just jotted down in our notes uh, what we liked, what we didn't like. Uh, you know, it's like the bathroom's too dark. Like, <laughs> so we thought about our competitors deeply and what they lacked and what the consumers probably or most likely wanted. So we try to merge that to make Brooklyn tea. Um, a lot of the tea shops locally are grab and go. There's nowhere to sit down. Um, so we made sure that our tea space was welcoming, had great seating, had nice music, so people felt welcome to come in and stay. Can you tell us about what your business plan looked like? I think it's really underestimated how important a business plan is to start in a company. Um, sometimes you can lead in thinking, I can just meet with my friends, we have a couple of conversations, create a little outline, right? Throw up a little website and I'm good to go. And so you just don't get to account for, for the pitfalls, right? Mm -hmm. And catch them ahead of time. Uh, when you have a business plan, you get to really take the time to think about what do you really want to see happening and what are others doing. So Ali was able to do what, what you call like a heat map? Yeah, we did a heat map of the concentration of coffee shops in New York City. So we went, you know, that deep into the, the research. We just wanted to make sure that before we invested all of our money into something, that we did as much <laughs> research before the first check was due yeah. as possible. Was there any one thing that shocked you in that research? I, <laughs> did you have a moment where you said, oh my gosh, I had no idea. I think when we did the financial section, yeah. I was like, I think we could do this. Uh, and that was shocking. It, 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 I got it, this. Yeah, I was like, you know what? Uh, yeah. When you break it down day by day, yeah. I was like, you know what? We don't need that many people to come in through the door to make this work. And that was kind of reassuring. Because yeah, at first, it's like, how are we going to do this with no one comes? And uh, it was like, you know what? Like 10 to 14 people a day. That's yeah. all we really need. And that was like, okay, we could do this now. I'm, I'm not afraid to spend all my money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that the community is thankful that you took that risk and did that. Yeah. yeah, they've been awesome, and they're really yeah. excited that we're there, especially where we are. Um, there are a bunch of tea shops in South Brooklyn and in Manhattan, but none in Central. So they're they're really excited about us. Yeah, they take they take such good care of us. We're actually really spoiled in our neighborhood. Good. Yeah, we really. You are. deserve that. Yeah. Thank you so much for <laughs> opening up and sharing Thank your you. story with us. This this was so much fun. Um, I want to shift gears now play a game that we call Hustle Time. Count us down, please. Okay, I'm ready. Which would you rather give up for life, pizza or sandwiches? Sandwiches. Would you rather never be able to teach or never be able to learn? Never be able to teach. If you had to eat one thing for breakfast every day for the rest of your life, what would it be? Pizza. Apples or an apple or dried? Apple. One thing you'd want on a desert island with you? Water. Music or podcasts? Music. Three things in your closet right now? 
shoes, pants, shirts. Chardonnay, yay or nay? Chardonnay. Fireplace or fire pit? Fireplace. Fire pit. Ah. Ah. Favorite workout? Arms, legs, or abs? Abs. Yeah. If you have to lose access forever, do you pick search engines or social media? Search engines. Favorite pastime, music or movies? Movies. First place to visit when you retire? Atlanta. Number one guilty pleasure? Gummy bears. One word you wish you could take away from the English language? Can't. Boozy brunch or morning workout? Boozy brunch. Football, <laughs> NFL, or soccer? Soccer. Aliens, fact or fiction? Fact. Beer or wine? Wine. Favorite part of a s'more? Marshmallow. Top quality, look for an employee. Ah. <laughs> top, 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 top quality, look for an employee. Let's, let's do this last one. Humility. Let's, let's find out the moment of truth here because this is actually enormous. Good. I'm excited to see where we are. Let's count. 17, 18, 19, 20, lucky 21. Okay. All right. 19. All right. All right. All right. Favorite part of your day? For me, it's mornings. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? <laughs> you do one? Yeah, do one. Mine's a little pessimistic, but it's uh, <laughs> the people who love you give you the worst advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Worst piece of advice. <laughs> Worst piece of yeah. advice. Yeah. Uh, that you need to wait for everything to be perfect in order to do what you want to do. People who love you always do that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you use your career to inspire others? Uh, yeah, That's you. you know. <laughs> That's good. It's been great to be in a space where people feel motivated. Um, it's like, okay, you all come from these none, like, nowhere. nowhere backgrounds, right? I'm a teacher educator by trade. Digital marketer. Yeah, and we somehow started not just a tea shop, but, but a tea company, right? And so yeah. people have come into our shop uh, just asking us about our business plan, how we got started. They're also startup entrepreneurs, and we entered our our business plan to a writing competition and so a lot of those folks who are entered this year yeah come back to us yeah awesome. yeah mm -hmm. ever felt like walking away yes yeah. one thing you still need to learn patience what do you want people to learn from you perseverance perseverance yeah what's next for you hopefully uh another shop, another shop and maybe yeah. in another state yeah. who inspires you <laughs> Who challenges you? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, um, we shared in social that you were coming, and we have a question from Michaela, CEO of Beauty. She asks, any chance that you will open other locations or expand? And you, you just hinted to it a moment ago. Yes. Is there something in the works? Slowly. Yeah. So okay. we've um, we've been doing some scouting. We're, okay. And uh, we're just checking about what city makes the most sense for our next door. Uh -huh. We'll likely be outside of Brooklyn. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And again, okay. like I said, we're not a tea shop. We're a tea company. That's so right. expansion. Can be also, you know, ready to drink, bottled teas. Or, well, exactly. It could yeah. be a whole new product offering. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It doesn't oh. have to be a, a store. No. Yeah. But oh. we want it to be, so, though. <laughs> so we, we have a lot to look out for. We have one last uh, piece of advice that needs to be had, and this advice is for Noodle. Aww. Our resident pug. Hi, Noodle. Hold I'll hold Noodle. <laughs> you okay, Noodle? Let's the leg down. Uh, so Noodle yeah. has a question? Yes, now Noodle is not a tea drinker. Uh, oh. And he's overwhelmed by all of the options in the marketplace. Come on, Noodle. <laughs> he has, however, heard about the many benefits that tea provides. What advice do you have for someone who wants to make tea a regular part of their lifestyle, but is reluctant to invest time and money because they just don't understand how to get started? Easy one. Um, tea has many flavors and varieties. I would suggest finding one that's close to something you already, you already know and like. Um, if you like fruits, try a tea mixed with fruit. 
Do you like a smoky flavor? There's smoky teas. Yeah. So just try something that's not very foreign to you yeah. and then start there and then you can start to branch out after that. And Noodle, there are rooibos um, tea dog treats that exist. We don't sell them, but you can find them. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you like blueberries, go find a tea with blueberries in it. Right. Yeah. You know? Cool. Mm -hmm. There's so many varieties, right? So many. Well, as we close, we like to leave everybody with a final thought. So I'm going to read three quotes to you and ask you to tell me which one resonates the most with you and why. Number one, a creative person is motivated by the desire to achieve, not by the desire to beat others. Number two, it's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get up. Number three, you are never too old to set a new goal or to dream a new dream. I think we'd be, we're different on this one. I think okay. I would be the second one. It's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get up. And what would you be? Number one. Number one. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I believe in pursuing excellence and not really judging on my own success. Yeah. Tell everybody watching how they can follow you. Yes. Yeah, so everyone, please join us um, at Facebook and on Instagram at Brooklyn T. You can also check out our website, brooklynt.com. And of course, stop by our shop, 524 Nostrand Avenue in Brooklyn. I know that everybody enjoyed this conversation and felt inspired. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching out making business plans as we speak. <laughs> um, we so much enjoyed this. And, and I have to say thank you for being here. Thank you, Shannon. And as everyone follows Brooklyn Tees, please also follow GoDaddy and Social because we are bringing new entrepreneurs every week to Social to help inspire and create a community, um, you know, just like this one, where we can help each other in our businesses and and enjoy what we do. So please keep watching, and we will see you all soon. Bye. 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 Bye.